the general thing that I had when, when teaching the boot camps, I found that it got progressively harder to get jobs as a junior. But that's also because everybody at some point really wanted to become a developer. So there's also just that many junior developers out there. You think uh, we're ever going to get to a point where there's going to be no need for developers because AI is so powerful? Because the reason I ask this is because I've actually talked to people, and this sounds ludicrous, that quit pursuing development because they feel like there's no point. No, I, I, well, I mean, it's a hard question to ask because nobody knows, right? That's the main thing for now as well. But for me personally, I think I was a little bit scared at the beginning. I don't know when ChatGPT 3.5 and then very shortly after we had four and it mm. was like such a big improvement in a very short amount of time. But that's now, I think, one and a half years or even more long ago. And since then, the only changes really, in my opinion, have been like, I don't know, you can, you now have more context or it's now faster. But like the code quality and everything hasn't improved that much. And also now when I, for example, do like more or like more obscure frameworks or things like, I don't know, for example, Swift, it doesn't have as much training data. So the it's very, it's a lot harder to work with it. The same thing I found with uh, Svelte. So now that there's Svelte 5, you can't even use any AI really to oh, wow. help with that. Like it doesn't really reason well. Claude does it a little bit, but just because it doesn't have the training data. And I think, but obviously just a, maybe a hot take, but I think, there's just not enough data out there to actually replace the developers today or also in the future. Yeah. And I was thinking about like, what does chat GPT actually do? And I think what it does just automates like the search online that you would have done manually. And it just puts it to you in your chat window or it, you know, guesses what would be because it is still a random, uh, very, very smart random, uh, character generator. But, um, what I was realizing is that. It just eliminates the step of you going to Stack Overflow, Google, searching the stuff yourself, reading through the stuff yourself. But when you, you back in the day used to find that code, it didn't mean that it would really be perfect. You still had to understand what I was doing. So I think of AI as just like taking your ability to ask questions and eliminating the steps of going through Google, going through Stack Overflow, unless you really have to. And so like I realized that it's not actually going to replace coders because from the standpoint where it's at right now it doesn't make the best code and sometimes it will break and if there's no human on that side to kind of keep it in check and fix things like you could get in trouble really easily like for instance i had my daughter come over like this is what people like they're like oh it's going to take over jobs i'm like okay let me put this to the test i didn't make a video of this but i'm like oh man that's a good opportunity i said to my daughter who never come before i'm like hey Here's Chad GPT. Here's cursor. I want you to make me a really simple website. She couldn't get 0% of the way. It's just like, if you don't have the understanding of development and how to build stuff, even with these tools, you're not going to get anywhere. And so I get really upset when I see the hype on Twitter or YouTube. It's like how I build a $10,000 company with AI, like web dev or like what have you. And then when you look yeah. at those videos and you're like, hey, show me the GitHub so I could see like the actual history of your commits. And then you see it's like, oh, they did this not in uh, two hours. They did this in like two weeks of like actually, yeah. you know, it's like it's just so uh, what do you think about like is do you think the hype is like hurting folks or, you know, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, one thing that I do see um, and also just again, right, as a freelancer, when you're alone on a project, you realize like how many more things you can now do thanks to AI and you're also speeding up a lot. So I can see, for example, that some mid-level developer can now maybe replace some of the juniors work. But I mean, the idea also of hiring juniors is to make them mid-level developers at some point, right? So you do still need all those mid-level developers. But I could see, for example, I was teaching um, in boot camps before and to now go into a bootcamp to then become a junior developer when right now there's a very saturated market and that's not just AI, right? But that there's fewer maybe junior roles in the future. That stuff I can see. But again, that AI actually replaces the mid and senior. I think we're, we're a long way off. Um, and I don't know what, what actually happened to Devin. Do you remember Devin? <laughs> I don't know what happened to Devin, but there's a YouTube channel, um, called Internet of Bugs and he kind of debunked, uh, Devin and that kind of, that video well, went viral. And so his channel grew actually met with him and had a interview and i think he kind of showed that it was a farce and it was just like a way to kind of build excitement and what have you and i'm sure these tools eventually will get better with like ai agents and, and stuff like that and i think to your point i think there's hype and then there's like reality and then it's just i think understanding how the tools work to kind of be able to know where 
reality meets hype and to be able to better navigate. And to your point, talk about how as a freelancer, especially if you're like mid-level, you could find the value of how to use these tools to automate some of the tasks that junior developers would do, which would allow you as a mid-developer to focus on more important things and move much faster. And that's something that I'm seeing as well. But and there is that fear of, hey, if that's the case, and a lot of companies just want to be more productive with least amount of resources, and because AI is able to replace some of these junior tasks, it's like, why not uh, do it? And the question I was going to say, do you think if companies adapt this mindset that we either not going to have basically a path for junior developers to become mid-level developers and basically the expectation is going to be for jobs, you know, uh, hey, you need to be a mid-level developer just to get into the door. Yeah, I think it's very hard to, because I, I obviously don't see exactly now how the job market, is, uh, job market is and how many juniors are being hired and so on. The general thing that I had when, when teaching the boot camps, I found that it got progressively harder to get jobs as a junior. But that's also because everybody at some point really wanted to become a developer. So there's also just that many junior developers out there um, right now. And I think as well, like, yeah, when you when everybody stops hiring with like, I mean, the tech market itself was already problematic, that they might be looking rather for people that are already experienced than the than the juniors. But like I said, again, right, the I would I would think that the main reason to actually hire juniors is to upskill them and then have you know, a better workforce, a better workforce there. Yeah. And the second part is going to make for this because of kind of these interesting times we live in. Like I used to argue for the fact that getting your first job is the most important thing. Yeah. Getting that experience sure. makes sense. But now like seeing like how some of these companies lay folks off and how there is no real job security outside of you being really good at your craft and being able to kind of bring value to companies to get hired. And now I'm like, 